Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for UFC Singapore. And I apologize for getting this done late. However, um, this is actually very, very selfish of me to do this right now because um, I was going to not take the time to do this, but I am going to do this. And it's not because I owe it to you guys, it's not for anything else. But I had to fly to Vegas to um, to register for the Circa Survivor Tournament, uh, Survivor Contest, as well as the Circa Millions. And I'm literally here for one day. And I'm actually meeting Bobby at 8 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock uh, Western time, which to me is going to be about 11 p.m. Eastern time. And I am just dead exhausted. So I just actually need something to do to kill about 45 minutes or a half an hour before I can shower and get down there. Um, I've tried to just hang out at the sports book. Uh, just it's not interesting to me. Just so way too much stimulation. I don't gamble. So that's too much stimulation. So I'm literally just killing a half an hour, 45 minutes before I can legitimately shower and then get down to see Bobby. Now, again, it's about 9.30 p.m. right now, Eastern time, and the fights start at 5 a.m. Eastern time. So if anybody gets anything out of this, if this even gets three views, it would be an absolute miracle. But I figure with all this effort to get this out and all of this effort for anybody to watch this, uh, this is guaranteed, this has to be guaranteed to win, right? So again, this is a contrarian MMA betting breakdown. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, what we essentially do is figure out where the public is with respect to biases, with respect to um, narratives and everything else, and just basically fade it. The idea is that you know if, if something is such an easy thing to predict or an easy story to tell, that it's probably overvalued. And this concept, you know, trickles down from MMA betting. I mean, it trickles down from other things to MMA betting. It trickles up all the way through the stock market, through all other forms of wagering. So, again, for those of you who have been watching these throughout, hopefully you're learning, well, forget how to win, but how to think about things a little bit differently and not just, just buy into the overall narrative that, all the experts are purporting to, to, to push on you because while the experts are good, right. Everybody seems to settle on this on one or two things that can happen in a sport that's filled with chaos. And those things that are just a little more likely to happen end up getting bet a bet way too much. So what we're going to do is we are just going to just pile down the bets that I already made um, and just kind of go through my logic behind them. So there are two bets that I was not able to get in on DraftKings because uh, they weren't up yet when I took off. And you're not allowed to play sports betting from DraftKings in Las Vegas. I had to actually go down to the sports book to do it. And yes, I didn't have to play this, but you know what? I wanted to stay true to our rules, which are we want to bet one thing every fight. And again, it's not the greatest money management system in the world, but who cares? Number two, we want to bet 180, which is one unit on every fight, which, again, is not the greatest money management system in the world. The other thing is that the other rule is that um, because we're being very contrarian, it's very likely that we lose all you know the first 12 bets. So the rule is, is that in the main event, we're going to play something that gets at least 13 to 1. So those were the rules. So the first thing I will do is just briefly go over the two bets that I've made that you're not going to see here on DraftKings. Um, that's going to be the, the first of all, they bet on C, uh, the Siwoo Choi fight and also the J.J. Aldridge fight. With respect to the fight, the Siwoo Choi fight, he's fight, fighting Jared Aarons. And to me, this is very easy because you have Siwoo Choi, who has essentially been a big favorite his last three fights. And he just loses every single fight. I and mean, who in their right mind would play a guy again after he loses a big favorite three times in a row when once again, he's a favorite. As a matter of fact, Aaron's has been taking all this sort of sharp money as a result of this. So what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, Choi. We, we, we put him inside the distance. I think we got plus 180. 
Okay, so that's the one thing. Second of all, J.J. Aldridge versus uh, Lan Yang. Um, you know, Lan Yang is, is a very entertaining fighter, but the fact of the matter is she only has like three minutes of cardio and she's going to give it a good show. But in the end of the day, you know, J.J. Aldridge is going to take over. It's just a question of whether she gets that first finish or not. So we are going to take Yang. So we bet her plus, I think it was 380. So the two bets you will not see on this card, uh, in the DraftKings card that I'm going to show you, is we're going to have Siwoo Choi inside the distance, and we're also going to have Nyak, uh, Lang to, Yang to win. All right, so uh, Billy Goff against uh, Yashu, uh, against uh, uh, Kinoshita. So Kinoshita, he got he got he got tooled on by like by a U.S. guy in his last. In the, in the last Singapore card, I think, when Adam Fugit came and as a big underdog, just took him down and took him to school. And all I'm hearing about is our excuses. You know, he's just young, Kinoshita, okay? And Billy Goff doesn't have that same kind of experience, so this is going to be the setup bounce-back fight for, 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 uh, for Kinoshita. So we're going to bet Billy Goff. So we bet Billy Goff actually to win by... Uh, inside the distance at plus 165. Um, I, I guess in no particular order, uh, we'll just go up straight up the, the betting card. Here. We're going to get to every fight here. Um, Parker Porter against Justin Taffa, excuse me, Junior Taffa. So he lost. So Porter got dusted by his brother in one round. And this guy's supposed to be even better. So this is like clearly an easy spot for Taffa to get the, the perfect narrative win to get both the brothers to knock out Parker Porter. Um, so uh, we're going to bet Park Porter here. Porter for just basically inside the distance, uh, plus 225. Hopefully he gets takedowns and submits him. Uh, Talia Santos versus uh, Aaron Blanchfield. Aaron Blanchfield is just the most hyped up uh, prospect there is. Everybody loves playing Blanchfield. Nobody bets against her ever. And She's just going to be, she just has to be bad value tonight because of that. Okay. Um, so we're going to play Talia Santos and we just couldn't resist the inside the distance line on her. So we put her at plus 600 inside the distance. So Talia Santos inside the distance, fading all the Aaron Blanchfield love plus 600. Giga Jakatsi against Alex Caceres. And you see this is going out of order in the fights, but it's just where, where I put the bets in. Um, so, Giga Jakadze is probably going to win a striking-based decision. That's kind of the overall narrative. And if that doesn't happen, Caceres, he's been on kind of a run, so he might be able to, to, to you know, maybe even get a submission or at least take Jakadze down. But people are not really predicting uh, Jakadze inside the distance, so that's what we're going to do. We bet Jakadze inside the distance, plus 250, once again for 180. We're going to get to the main event in a few minutes. We'll, we'll get back to that. Um, uh, Chidi uh, Njokwani versus Michael Elizachuk. The only thing I know for sure about this fight is that the two of them are going to both stand and bang and someone's getting KO'd. So what we decide is we're going to bet that to go the distance. So yes, fight goes the distance plus 250. Anthony Smith uh, versus Ryan Spann. So uh I don't people are just not going to learn their lesson, I guess. So Anthony Smith just basically just took this dude to school in his last fight. But because he had like one bad fight, I think against Johnny Walker, essentially like Andrew Smith is now considered done. And because since then span got a first round KO against the washed up Dominic Reyes, then all of a sudden this line is just moved to span being the favorite. No, thanks. We'll do the same thing that happened last time. We're going to click Anthony Smith inside the distance, specifically in round two, plus the 650. Um, all right, so this was actually a misclick, the Nakamura Fernie Garcia bet. What I meant to do was play Garcia uh, Nakamura in round two because people, I mean, he's just going to go after it in round one and just basically either KO him, or if not, maybe he runs out of gas and it goes to decision. But uh, very few people are actually going for round two. So what I meant to do is play Nakamura round two. But what I what I did was basically the round two for both fighters. So if you play Rock Nakamura round two, you get a little bit better than plus three, 350. So this particular wager, which you're seeing, actually has that you know 1% chance of Fernie Garcia 
uh, getting the second round win also. So we're getting anybody to win in round two as plus 350. Uh, okay. Uh, Cortez Acosta versus Lucas Breski. Um, you know, Breski is basically just a wild swinger. He he got sort of robbed by 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 Luke by uh what you call it by uh Martin Boudet, but then he came back and just got abused by I think it was not Charles Johnson, I forget the guy's name, who just took him down like 37 times. And Waldez Cortez Acosta, even though he's not you know a great finisher, he's gonna piece him up and just basically win a decision. So we went the other way. We did take the Breschke side at plus 180. Pretty contrarian take there, I believe. Um, to sh- uh, Kazama versus Garrett Armfield. This is a, a classic bias case of someone that's getting overvalued because of a loss. We're going to get to another one like that in a few minutes. But um, Garrett Armfield and his fight against David Onama came in on short notice, up a weight class, and gave a pretty decent account of himself. Those types of fighters are usually pretty overvalued. So we just blindly went against that. And we took Kazama plus the 136. Uh, and Kazama, if I'm not mistaken, he got first round KO'd by uh, by Nakamura before. So, uh, you know, I don't know anybody would really want to play him coming off of that performance against the Garrett Armfield, who, again, had that good win, that good performance off a loss. So we'll do it. We'll take uh, Kazama plus the 136. So you have now, as I was mentioning, Rolando Bedoya. He was another one who had a really, really good performance in a loss. He had a very, very close split decision fight against um, Chaos Williams. Some people actually thought he won, but it was a really, really impressive performance. So, again, those types of fights usually tend to get extremely overvalued in their next in their next spot. So um Bedoya at plus whatever 320 we're just going to take the other side we are taking King and Song at plus the 270 just on straight on the money line okay so we basically went over 12 fights and pretty much all 12 of them are just kind of hopeless you know like Lan Yang is, has 30 seconds of cardio she has no chance to win Kisin Yu Choi I mean what kind of idiot is going to bet him again as the favorite so that we're going to lose those two and then just kind of reminding ourselves these others here I mean, you have, you know, uh, Goff against uh, Kinoshita, basically betting against basically a fixed fight for Kinoshita. Why would we do that? Um, Parker Porter, you know, he's, he lost by round one to the worst of the Tafa guys. Certainly he's going to lose to this one, so we're going to lose this bet, obviously. Um, Aaron Blanchfield, anybody that bets Aaron Blanchfield has got to be something wrong with him, so we're going to lose this one also. Um, Jakazi getting the finish is just never happening, so we're going to lose that one also. Um, you have Bedoya, who essentially almost beat Chaos Williams. He's not losing to Kevin Song, so we're losing that one. We have Garrett Armfield, again, off the great performance. Not only is the good good performance off a loss, but that 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 loss is validated uh, when uh, Onama came back with a really, really big win against um, uh, Gabriel Santos. So um, who in their right mind is going to take Kazama here? We'll try it, uh, but we're going to lose. Breski, he just never wins anything, so we're going to lose it with him. Uh, Nakamura is probably going to knock the guy out in the first round and break our souls again, so that's another loss. Anthony Smith, I mean, I don't – this one I just don't quite get exactly, but apparently they got to know something because Mer- apparently Anthony Smith, I guess, in his last fight just showed that he was done, and Ryan Spence just continues to improve. So um, Anthony Smith, we're going to lose that one. And then the 12th out of 12 – is this this total battle, this war, this Enjuquani versus Oazachuk is obviously going to get finished in the first round or two. It's never going to go to the distance. So we're going to lose that one too. So over 12 going into the last fight, we're going to have to come up with something to make our money back. So this fight is basically shouldn't, shouldn't be, be sanctioned apparently by, um, by, uh, Ooh, we logged out. We logged off of drafting. But I'll tell you what we did. This, this last fight shouldn't even be sanctioned because you saw the Korean zombie. I mean, he got just destroyed by Volkanovsky, okay? And now he's fighting in Vax Holloway, who is just going to put a beating on him with just a full volume-based decision uh, or a knockout. I mean, this Korean zombie just really doesn't have much of a shot. But we need something that's 13 to 1 or higher, so we're going to try him, and we're going to try him uh, by submission. The I do see that he has some takedowns in his arsenal, and quite honestly, it's really the only way he's going to have a chance to win is if he if he takes the dude down. Um, because if he takes him down, he has the chance of getting that 
you know, um, whatchamacallit, that, that Asian bias decision at the end. But let's go for that submission while he's out, got him on the ground. I don't know. So we, did, took, we took that plus 22 to 1. So that should about do it. Uh, and we were killed actually enough time where I think I could go into the shower and meet Bobby for dinner. And then I'll probably sleep through most of the fights before I have to get out of here tomorrow. But I'll probably wake up and see the last bunch of them. I guess that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.